Okay, let's look at 10 useful functions in Excel. Uh, Excel actually has hundreds, at least, maybe over a thousand different functions, at least hundreds. Uh, and uh, they're all very useful, depending on uh, what your interests are and what your needs are. Uh, many of Excel's functions are very statistical in nature and, you don't, and more sophisticated than most people need. Um, but there's a lot of really cool ones that if you knew about, you'd probably use them more often. So I'm going to give you kind of a little sampler here. Uh, the first one is probably the one of the most common functions, which is the sum function. So let's say, for example, you wanted to add these three numbers together. Uh, a way to do it easily is just to, you know, enter a formula that adds those three cells. Um, pretty quick if you're doing it this way, but let's say there's a hundred of these numbers. You might want to find a quicker way to add those. Uh, one way to do it is to use the sum function. Um, actually, a little shortcut, if you hit Alt and then the equals sign, uh, it will automatically enter the sum function. And it, you can see here it automatically selected the cells above it. Um, but you can also specify the cells if you want to as well, manually. Hit Enter, and uh, there's, your, there's your answer. So a very easy way to add things up. Okay, next let's look at the true function. Um, now actually true is just a, a result. Um, so for example, let's say that we want to use what's called a logical function to see whether uh, whether uh, this particular value in this in this row here um, or I should say in this column here for each row um, is actually uh, larger than thirty two hundred dollars let's say we want to know which ones are larger um, <clears throat> a quick way to do it now again these are already already sorted that way but you know these might be sorted kind of randomly um, for example, you could have them sorted like this, let's say by customer ID, um, in which case they're not in any particular order over here, okay? But we want to easily flag or, or tell which ones are which. So what I'm going to do is just say um, equals um, this is greater than 3200. It's going to return false because it's not greater than 3200, okay? Um, <clears throat> But th these two return a true value because those are both greater. So again, with the true function, you don't actually have to enter the word true anywhere in the function. You just create what's called a logical statement. And if the statement is true, it will say true. If not, it will say false. So pretty easy. Uh, next, let's look at the if function. Um, <clears throat> let's say we wanted to say um, if it's greater than 3200, you want to actually call it out instead of just saying true, let's say you wanted to say something, okay? So, <clears throat> to show you an example, equals if, parentheses, this is greater than 3200, and because it's a number, uh, you don't need to put quotation marks. If you want to say, like, if it equals a certain text phrase, like yes or no, maybe, you would want to put, uh, you'd want to put um, uh, quotation marks around it. But let's leave it like that. So if B2 is greater than $3,200, then I want it to say um, greater. Otherwise, I want it to say uh, lesser, or I guess smaller, maybe sound better. Um, and then I want to say enter. So this is greater. So what it's done is performed a logical test here. And these are all come up as smaller, but these two come up as greater. Um, even if I were to sort this again by customer ID number, we would have the same result. Okay, so that's a pretty easy way to, to do that, and that's called the if statement. So again, the, the, the syntax is if logical statement, and then put what, what happens if it's true, and put what happens if it's false. Okay, all right, next is the and statement. So let's say in this uh, group of uh, names and, and ID numbers, we wanted to be able to figure out who was Kenny, which ones were Kenny O'Connor, okay? So what I'm gonna do, um, obviously we could just sort it, like I said earlier. Sorting things is easy if you're talking about several records, but if you're talking about several hundred or several thousand, then you wanna have a function. So um, let's just do a logical value. This is the and function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say equals and, uh, this one equals Kenny, um, comma, and then this one, equals O'Connor. Now in the first case they actually are equal to that so it's going to say true. Um, but notice how these, most of them say false except for this other one which is Kenny O'Connor as well. Um, 
Now, what's important to note here is that there's another Kenny in here. See how this Kenny Smith, he still comes up as false because we want to look at the first and the last name. So that's the AND function. Now, the OR function is the next one we're going to look at. Let's say we wanted to flag anybody who is either a female or has sales of over $3,200. What we do is we would say, and this one here, we'd say equals um, or this is greater than $3,200 or this equals F for female. Okay, so this one, now let's just drag this down here. And notice that these are both true because they're both uh, you know, over $3,200. This one's true because it's a female, even though it's less than $3,200. And of course, let's just say this one were F, it would still show as true. Okay? So that's the OR function. Uh, next up is the rank function. So let's say you've got all these different sales here and you want to rank them um, in order of greatest to least. You want to figure out who the, who the most sales is. Now, like I said earlier, you could just sort it, okay? Um, and you can look at it that way, that does rank them, but it doesn't really keep a record of it. So if you were to sort it again later, you don't really know which is which, okay? So let's do it using the rank function. I'm going to say rank, um, and then I'm going to say this, I want to rank this cell, and, I, and what do I want to rank it by? I want to rank it in terms of these cells. Okay, so I selected the cells. And note, I'm going to put something in here, this dollar sign, which basically is a, means a string. All that means is it's going to hold... It's going to hold those constant. I'm not going to explain that too much right now, but it just means that that same B2 to B9 will stay true for all of these, even though I dragged it down. If I didn't put the little S for dollar sign, it would actually advance it to B3, B10, B4, B11, like that. Okay, now if you look, this is ranked. So this is number one, the highest, at 934, uh, down to number eight, which was $45. Easy enough. Okay, the next one is the round function. Um, so obviously if you wanted to, you could just make this look, let's say you want it to be 478. You could just change, um, well, one way to do it would be to do the number format here. Um, oops, I did the wrong one. And uh, format cells with number, click on number, and I could just change it to zero decimal places. That's one way to do it, okay? But in the background, that's still this larger number, okay? Um, but let's say we actually want to make it so it's just purely rounded off. Then what, what I want to do is hit enter, or sorry, equal, and then round that one. And I'm going to put how many decimal places, okay? Uh, in this case, I want to round it to, z to no decimal places, so I'm going to put zero. And look, now it's 478, and it's a true 478. How do I know it worked? Because if I paste as values, which means I get rid of the formula in here, look, it's exactly 478. Um, now, let's just give one other example here. Let's say I wanted to round off to one decimal point. I would just put a 1 there. And now it's the 4, 478.3. Uh, and again, that shows up right there as that number. So that's how you do the round function. Uh, a couple more here. We have the if error. So let's say, for example, you're doing a calculation and you actually get an error. So let's say I do a formula that says 12 minus D. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So the value here is a form of error in Excel. There are some other errors as well, um, but this is one of them. And any of the errors that you want that you see here, um, you may want to have it so it doesn't it doesn't show that. So let's say, for example, in these cells, you have some valid numbers um, like this, and you drag this across. It's going to show the correct answer for these other ones because it's going to. Um, it's going to subtract this one from that one, but over here it didn't didn't work, right? Because this was a D. So a way to show that instead of showing value is to do tell it what to do. So you could you could put in around your around your uh, formula, put in if error, and then put at the end put comma what what you'd like it to do. So for example, you could have it say uh, check worksheet would be uh, would be one example. Okay, and I'm gonna make this font a little bit smaller so it fits in here. A little better. Okay, so now it's going to say check worksheet. So that way, instead of showing this ugly error value, it shows you something else. Um, you could also, and of course, I could, if I watch how, if I drag this across, it's still going to show correctly over here because these are not errors. Now, you could also have it, instead of saying check worksheet, you could have it say something else like default to 100. Then if it's an error, it's going to show 100 because you told it to. 
If not, it'll show the actual answer. Okay. Average, this one's pretty, pretty easy. Just um, let's say we want to average these dollars here. We would go like this um, and put the word average. And this is the, technically for those statistical people um, watching, then that's going to be the mean. There's also an average, which is the median and the mode, which are other functions you can do. But let's just do the average here, meaning mean. Uh, median would be would be using the median function here. Um, either way, though, average, let's stick with average for now. So that's the average. And again, like I did earlier, you can always paste as values if you want. And that way it's no longer a formula, it's a value. Last one is left. So let's say, for example, we wanted to look at what is the first initial of each of these people? Okay. We can use the left function, which says left, and then choose the cell, comma, how many, how many of the characters do you want? In this case, we want the first character only. So I'm going to put a 1, <clears throat> and it's only going to show me the K. Same for all the other first names. So here we have the first initial for each of these folks. And again, I'm going to save that as values. Okay. So those are 10 useful and easy functions in Excel.